Welcome to Unsafe Spaces. I'm Randy Cross. Let's get this thing going for uh, our 21st episode of Unsafe Spaces. Um, we're going to start with the week that was. It was a pretty good week by all standards. And when I say pretty good, I mean eventful. Last Monday night during Monday Night Football, the new Star Wars trailer hit, or actually the last Star Wars trailer hit, supposedly. And uh, also they started selling tickets. So for as soft as the, pro the box office has been for Hollywood, this will not be a soft office, uh, a soft box office or opening for this movie. It looks incredible. It looks like uh, this franchise will go on and on. And, you know, they have a lot of faith in this at Disney when they start building areas of an amusement park and rides about their movies. Star Wars comes uh, early December. It will hit theaters and it will be appointment type movies. Uh, you'll have to make an appointment, basically. Make a, <laughs> buy a ticket in advance to get seats if you want to see it in the first week or so. Uh, next story that seemed to dominate things um, after that Monday night was all things Harvey Weinstein or Weinstein. Um, Harvey Weinstein, the uh, Hollywood producer, Weinstein Company, um, ended up being booted from the Academy, um, which is a little ironic uh, when you consider the guys that are still in the Academy. Uh, you know, guys like Roman Polanski and whatnot, Woody Allen, people like that. But this guy, they've decided to kick out. Uh, Rose McGowan uh, was one of the stars that has talked about what she has gone through at the hands of this guy. Uh, several actresses have come forward and accused him of rape. And that's people on a few different continents, um, not only Europe and the United States, also now in New Zealand. Um, just reprehensible what this guy has done. And there is no defending what he did. And the people need to get away from this guy like he's radioactive. Um, and don't worry, they will. Um, next up on the news cycle was uh, our president, President Trump, uh, did what the last president who spent eight years in office did, and that signed executive orders because he couldn't get Congress um, to go along with many of his ideas. So Trump also uh, has been taken to sign in some books, signing executive orders into law. This particular one he did last week that's uh, got many Democratic leaders so exercised and liberals out of their mind uh, has to do with payments to insurance companies. Um, slight little detail there. All he was really doing was backing up uh, a court order. Uh, unlike an executive order, this uh, court order comes from actual court where they ruled th those payments were unconstitutional and illegal. So he's basically backing that up. But you don't hear that very often. But uh, at this rate, there won't be much of a stain or taint left from those eight years that that gentleman sat in the White House. Uh, next up on our week would be Vegas. And when I say Vegas, you know what I mean. Uh, I mean that horrific shooting at the uh, Harvest Festival, Harvest 91 Festival, um, where this idiot opened fire, supposed idiot, uh, only because we still haven't gotten much information as to, was he the only idiot? Was, when did this happen? How did this happen? Uh, what is responsible for a lot of this? Or who's responsible for a lot of this? You wonder why people get so frustrated and you hear so many conspiracies. How about a total lack of information and video, official video, that would really go a long ways towards clearing us up. And probably the guy that is in the middle of all this and you got to feel for is, is the police chief in Las Vegas because he had to, again, um, realign the time the timing chart on this incident, and he's taken a lot of flack. 
9.59 p.m., police now say, a hotel security guard checks a blocked stairway door leading to the 32nd floor. Just before 10.05, he gets to the hallway outside Stephen Paddock's room when he's wounded by gunshots. Just seconds later, Paddock opens fire on the crowd down below. Previous timeline put that hallway shooting six minutes earlier. That was based on a hotel security log. I provide you the information as I knew it, and everybody in here knew it was going to change. I said, police chief, I'm sorry, it was the sheriff, Sheriff Lombardo going through all that. And uh, yeah, the various conspiracy theories and, and everyone's got a video. Everyone's got some kind of a theory as to what actually happened. Um, very little information. And that overall is probably the most frustrating part of all this. Because you, you know it's evil and you know it's wrong. You just don't know why. And that lingers. That really lingers. Vegas Strong is right. All right, let's go on to the uh, what happened in over the weekend in the world of football. Our uh, our football headlines and scores. All right, we'll start this thing out. Uh, Friday night was not good. Friday night was not good uh, for ranked teams, starting with Clemson who was at Syracuse, and uh, Clemson losing to Syracuse. No one called that. No one saw that. I won't say no one because I'm sure there's a lot of Cle uh, Syracuse alumni, uh, as there are in the entertainment and uh, TV business, especially on the sports side, uh, said they knew it all along. But Syracuse beats Clemson, uh, and again, it looks like we're not going to have an undefeated team go all the way through this thing. Uh, and win unless Alabama can uh, can pull that that one off next game up Washington and Arizona State yeah Washington at Arizona State Arizona State wins this game um, can't begin to tell you outside of the probably the most common excuse you hear on these kinds of upsets for college teams that they're 18 to 22 year old kids young men who just lose focus and can't pay attention on a regular basis. Uh, and they just make dumb mistakes. Stuff just happens. But Washington, who was in the playoff last year uh, with a loss, mind you, uh, is again uh, going to have a loss on their record. Whether or not they can make it out of the West still remains to be seen. Next up was probably the game of the weekend in college football, and that was the OU-Texas game in Dallas, you know, home of the or site of the Texas State Fair. Incredible. Texas is back. Tom Herman's got them playing really, really well. But Lincoln Riley's um, Oklahoma Sooners just had too much for Texas. Um, they, they scored at the very end um, in one of those must-have uh, kind of a situations. And that's the kind of game that could possibly uh, be a difference maker when you start moving towards the end of the year. Uh, and go to a championship game in the Big 12. If you win that championship game in the Big 12, can propel you um, to a playoff. And uh, Baker Mayweather did, or Baker Mayfield did a great job on that last drive and hit a wide open, big old tight end. I'm not talking about a little wide receiver. I'm talking about a big old tight end that somebody decided not to cover. Um, hey, like I said. Sometimes they just lose focus, and that's what happened in this one. Next up was Georgia Tech and Miami. This game was as tough as everyone thought it was going to be for Miami. Georgia Tech was focused the entire way. They ran the ball, and they made the plays that mattered. Um, just an incredible job by Paul Johnson's crew. Uh, they opened the season with a loss to Tennessee. As bad as Tennessee's been doing, won't hold that against them. Uh, but since then, they've been on a run. And they pulled off uh, one of the better upsets, beating Miami. Uh, and Mark Richt, who is familiar with losing to an option offense because it happened to him some when he was at Georgia, playing Georgia Tech. Um, and the last one on the college side was uh, Navy at Memphis. Um, Navy was undefeated. Memphis had only one loss. Um, but Memphis came out of this with a win. And it wasn't so much just what Memphis did in this game because Riley Ferguson in his passing game was on the money again. Great completions, great play calling, 
uh, by them. Navy blew this game. There's no other way they can look at it. They ran for over 300 yards. Hell, I don't think Memphis had ever lost or won a game where they gave up that many yards rushing. And Navy loses that game because they had five turnovers, three fumbles, two interceptions. And when you're a team like Navy who kind of lives life on the edge anyway, you don't have the talent to overcome those kind of problems. So uh, Navy is now uh, dropped from the rankings. He's now uh, dropped from the uh, no-lose situation. They now got one loss on their record, and they play UCF this coming Saturday at Navy uh, and take on an undefeated team led by Scott Frost. And uh, UCF is uh, off to one hell of a start, and it should be fun to watch. Let's move on to the NFL and some of the games that happened on that side. And we'll start with, um, well, New England and the Jets. Did you see this? Did you see this supposed non-touchdown? Jenkins lost control of the football. And they're ruling it a fumble through the back of the end zone. I, I'm just trying to fully understand the call. So he juggles it there. He's running with it, and, and then he juggles it. it, but he goes over the goal line and, with and possession. Across the goal line. Yep. Good point, Dan Fouts. He's got it there. That's Maintains a touchdown. Possession there. Pylon goes down. Malcolm Butler with a heck of a job. Moving the ball right there. But well, the Jets fans just learned uh, if it comes to a controversy over a fumble in possession and you're going against the Patriots, you ain't going to win. Ask the Raiders. Don't mean to open up any bad wounds about the tuck or anything like that. Uh, sorry, Amy Trask. I apologize. The great Raider executive that I think cringes every time anybody says the tuck. But uh, that was a horrendous call. And if the NFL has any stones, they'll admit that that was a bad call. Uh, next up on the games from the weekend in the NFL, uh, a little closer to home here, is Atlanta played Miami. And Atlanta actually enjoyed a 17-0 lead over the Miami Dolphins. Sound familiar? Big lead. Could they uh, maybe screw that one up? Well, they did. They've screwed up a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl. In the last two weeks, they've screwed up leads where they couldn't finish the game. And you're going to hear a lot of stuff about them, you know, bad play calling. It's all about this. It's all about that. It's very, very simple. You got to learn to finish in football. You got to learn to step on the other guy's throat. You've got to finish a game. If you can't finish a game, then you are soft. Then you are unintelligent. Then you are a loser. So until you fix that problem, that's not an unfair stigma or label. That's just who you are. Enjoy it. Uh, next up on the games over the weekend, uh, my former team, the San Francisco 49ers, found another way to lose a tight game. They're now 0-6. Uh, lost to the Washington Redskins. Uh, and the Washington Redskins found uh, probably the most questionable way to celebrate a touchdown as a group in this. Check this out. Yeah, it's a pat down. You're going to be arrested. So, yeah. Seriously? Okay. No problem. Whatever floats your boat, boat boys, get at it. But the Redskins, uh, law, our Redskins beat the 49ers um, and hung a pretty good, on, pretty good one on a team that gets to fly across the country and uh, think about a, a creative way uh, to win a game. And hopefully their first win can be next Sunday uh, when the 49ers will be honoring the 1981 Super Bowl champions. And specifically, uh, I think uh, one of my good buddies on that team, Dwight Clark, I hope it's going to be there, um, and it'll be a, a hell of a celebration. Hopefully that's going to be their first win. Um, and that's, that's kind of it uh, in the NFL, except for one slight little detail. 
Last Thursday night, the Carolina Panthers went to Philadelphia. And if you've never been involved in a game in Philadelphia, the crowd can be a little bit testy. In fact, if you've ever sat in the upper decks of the old vet or this new Lincoln Financial Field, um, the, the Eagles fans can be challenging. They can throw stuff. They can say things. They can start fights. Well, things didn't go so well for the uh, Eagle fans sitting behind this guy, the Carolina Panther fan. Check this out. Now, this guy's been identified, been arrested, and I assume charged. But I've heard horror stories about being in those upper decks in Philadelphia. Um, actually kind of looks like the Carolina fan over there is coming in to break it up that the guy that he hit was a Carolina fan, but doesn't look like it with the Eagle swag on the, the, his buddy next to him. That can't happen. In case you're curious, that's the kind of behavior that can't happen and happens all the time in sporting events because uh when you when you mix passion and alcohol that is an un un uh, unbreakable bond and guaranteed way uh to get violence especially from adult males all right let's move on right now to uh, a monologue it'll be a brief one again kind of like last week's uh brief monologue that was about the first amendment um this one is about power and the places of power um, that have been in the news the most over the last you know, several years and at least several weeks, twofold. They are uh, the Capitol, Washington, D.C., and Hollywood. Now, it is inevitable when people are in power, they take advantage of that power and they want to use it to their advantage. Using it to your advantage is is is. That goes what you win elections, uh, you win ideas, you produce things, you know, you you call the shots. But when that power is abused, um, it doesn't have to be uh, just women. In fact, in Hollywood and in Washington, D.C., don't forget Washington, D.C. is the same place where there were Congress or there were people in Congress taking advantage of pages, young men. And Hollywood's going through the same thing now with Harvey Weinstein and the fact that people act like it's only women. It's not only women in Hollywood. That place is a degenerate mess. They take advantage of young kids. They take advantage of young boys. They take advantage of everybody. They're sick with this power. And it's not unlike how they're sick with power in Washington, D.C. The same thing. You don't think there's any pedophilia going on? In D.C., as there is in Hollywood, you don't think there are any pedophile rings? Don't fool yourself. This is a lot dirtier and a much muckier pond on both coasts than you're going to hear about because they'll find a way to quiet this down. They'll find a way for this to go away. But it'll, it'll bubble back up to the top because that stink won't stay below the surface long. And I mean that stink that the West Coast breeze or the East Coast breeze can blow away. All right, time now for the next segment of this show. And that's our Butt Hurt of the Week segment. Dun, da, da, da. Keep wanting to tell that guy to duck, but I don't think ducking can help him much. Um, all right, first story. If you're watching this weekend football, um, you saw something that they pro, for a prolonged period of time. In fact, I think it was about the about 24 of the most uncomfortable seconds um, on television. Um, the gentleman involved is named Bradley Chubb, and he's one of the better defensive players um, in the country for NC State. And if you take a look at this picture, um, what's wrong with this picture? 
Well, one of those fingers is pointing in a direction it really shouldn't be pointing. Check out this video. And about 16. Hello. And Bradley Chubb writhing oh, in pain. Title. Third. And about 16. And Bradley Chubb writhing oh, in pain title. on the field. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And this there's only one way to fix news. that. See him grab that they finger. Right that left hand. One, two, three. Whoop. He's flopped that sucker back in joint. Uh, by, back in place. Had that happen a few times. Trust me, that hurts a lot. And I hope Bradley Chubb is, is well soon. Uh, and, and maybe he doesn't have too much uh, residual effects from that. If nothing else, he'll just have to kind of tape his fingers together for a few weeks. Um, but that was, ooh, boy, talk about sense memory. I remember what that felt like. Uh, the next one is a little bit of a faux pas. And don't always point out television's mistakes, especially when they're mine or people I work with. But here's one that happened on ESPN this weekend because the Oklahoma-Texas game, which we played earlier, or we talked about earlier, is played in the Cotton Bowl. Old, old, old stadium. Um, but it's a great location. The Texas State Fair is on the grounds there. And, um, yeah, well, you can do a lot of great things. Look at, look at the Cotton Bowl. You've seen those pictures forever. Well, they had a weather graphic that went along with the game they were talking about on uh, ESPN's game day. See, there's a sky shot. There's the weather. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Um, they wanted to give you a heads up, though, that the Cotton Bowl roof may be closed if the weather gets bad. Really? Cotton Bowl roof may be closed. Did you see a roof on that last picture? That's, you know, there's a lot of work that goes, that goes into a lot of these shows. Um, they can't prove for you to everything. And obviously that's one they kind of like back. And for now, they got to be just a little butt hurt about not getting that one right. Um, next one up is, uh, then I came across this story. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. And it's only because of the headline and the claim by this gentleman, Robert Kufler. He said, I'm not some nutball. Now, here, as they say, is the rest of the story. Uh, this gentleman had supposedly done away with his mother and twin brother and lived in the same house for a year with the bodies. And his comment, he of White Bear, Minnesota, I'm not some nutball. People think I am, but I'm not. I love them. Hmm. Remind me to go out of my way to make sure no one loves me quite like that. Uh, speaking of nutballs, and this is a guy that uh, it was a heck of a comedic act actor. Uh, he of the famous line in National uh, Lampoon's Christmas movie. Uh, hey, the shitter's full. Randy Quaid also pl played the alcoholic dad um, in, the, in the space alien movie uh, where he flew his jet up into the mothership uh, Independence Day. Um, yeah, Randy Qu Quaid can be a little bit weird. And when he gets weird in movies, people go, oh, that quirky Randy Quaid. But when you get quirky... And you get really weird, and the Illuminati is after you. You're officially kind of weird. Check out this video. All right, I'm going to read a, um, I'm going to read a statement, and afterwards, uh, turn it over to my attorney, Captain Sass, for any questions you may have. Um, for the past 20 years, my wife, Evie, and I have been the victims of criminal activities perpetrated by a small network of individuals who are out to destroy us personally, professionally, and financially. Three of these individuals are Hollywood lawyers and a business manager, all of whom I hired 20 years ago to handle my legal and business affairs. The president of the bank's estate planning division told my wife, but the bank prefers dead actors because they don't get in the way. Okay. Uh, well, actually, kudos to that attorney, the, the woman that was standing next to Quaid, 
because she obviously convinced him to clean his act up because before his beard was about down to here, had long, long, gray, you know, gray hair. He's balding, but it was, where it wasn't bald, it was long and frizzy looking. Um, he looked a lot weirder, but good to know the Illuminati's still busy because they've got enough time on their hands that they have to go after Randy Quaid. Well played. <laughs> what a nutball. <laughs> All right, next up, real world news. Well, we've got two or three kind of weird stories in real world news and one serious one. Um, and I'll start with a weirder one. And that is how many of you are aware that we're about to be out of bananas? Yes, bananas are going away. The banana apocalypse is about to be upon us because they have a strange disease that is decimating the banana crops. Uh, in places like Brazil and down in South America. And now that is a sad banana. But that will be you soon enough when you can't have your morning bananas for your cereal or your protein shake or however it is you use bananas. They won't be around us. They won't be here for us much longer. Uh, the serious story in this group is the story that keeps on going and going. Um, it's just stunning how much damage can be done by these fires uh, in Northern California, specifically in the wine country, wine region. Death tolls up to 40 as they can continue to f fight these things. And you think of fires as, you know, living, breathing things, but of, of shortened uh, lifespans. But that's not true with this one. In fact, they did an update yesterday on exactly what this fire was like. There's before and after, that's Santa Rosa. Check this update out. As far as the wildfires are concerned, I'll let you know just the scope of what we are still talking about. 15 large wildfires still burning in Northern California. So far, the fires have com burn, uh, combined, that is, to burn over 217,000 acres. To put that in perspective, that is an area about the size of the city of San Diego. That gives you an idea of just how much has burned so far. Within that burned area, we've had over 5,700 structures that have been destroyed. That includes both private residences and a lot of commercial buildings, unfortunately, that have gone up as well. As of today on Sunday, nearly 75,000 people are still evacuated. That number, though, is greatly down from what we saw just 24 hours ago. We had over 100,000 people evacuated on Saturday, but fire crews as quick as they can as soon as it is safe for letting people get back in their homes. So this number is now down. The sad number, the truly sad number, 40 fatalities so far in these combined wildfires. That makes this the deadliest week of wildfires in California history. Yeah, fast moving fires. That's why that's why the number of deaths are the way they are. Some of the winds during this week, 30, 40, 50 mile an hour wind gusts, and that carries embers and flames fast especially when you look at this area where there was so much rain this last winter, and then you go through a summer and all that fuel, all that grass, all those bushes, those trees, whatever, they dry back out. Unbelievable amount of fuel. And, uh, you know, it's, you, you gotta have your thoughts out there uh, for the people in Northern California. Um, and I'm sure FEMA is involved. They're on the ground helping out as they have been in, Florida and Puerto Rico and Texas and along the Gulf Coast. But uh, if you feel like donating, uh, the Red Cross is always the organization to me that does the best work. So look up your local, that local Red Cross effort for the people in Northern California because the wine industry and the wine area won't be the same for quite some time. Um, next up on the list is something, I don't know, do you think of, diseases like this still existing you know when i say bubonic plague you go bubonic what most people don't even know that is a disease well they used to refer to it back in the dark ages um the middle ages as the black death well bubonic plague is back big time on the island in madagascar and it's not a joke and we talked about various diseases when they do come back, 
you know, where does this happen? Well, we saw Ebola come back in parts of Africa. Here's the mayor of a city in Madagascar trying to explain things. You leave your house today and you can catch a plague tomorrow. I'm sure the Madagascar Tourist Bureau appreciates that input. Um, just crazy. But there's, that's why they call it the Black Death, because extremities lose circulation and you literally have parts of your body turning black as they rot and die. That's a disease that shouldn't, I, I thought it was cured, but it obviously isn't cured. Um, last story in the real world news is a story we've all got to keep an eye on. And that has to do with our boy Rocket Man over in North Korea, who's always spouting off. But Rex Tillerson uh, had a little something for Rocket Man that he ought to pay attention to about the theory on diplomacy. I've told others those diplomatic efforts will continue until the first bomb drops. Say what? He, sa he said, well, diplomacy until the first what? Yeah, he said it. And hopefully that moron will pay attention to it because he ain't playing. All right. All right. Let's have some fun. Time for tinfoil hat. When I think of uh, incredibly intelligent and incredibly brave people, um, it doesn't get much better than an astronaut. Somebody that's willing to sit on a little, sit on a little, I guess, piece of metal strapped to a gigantic tube of fuel and be shot into space. Well, not only shot into space, but in some cases, when you think about this astronaut and his group, they were as far away from humankind and civilization as possible. On the far back side of the moon, um, Alan Brow was there with his crew. And, and this is a guy that believed that we brought alien life back. I mean, alien life back from that trip. Here, here's his explanation. The Apollo 15 moon mission began on July 26, 1971, after three orbits of Earth. The command module traveled to the moon under the direction of command module pilot Alfred M. Worden. This was Worden's first, and only, space mission end, when his orbit took him to 2,235 miles from the surface, he set a record, at the time, for being the farthest away from any other human beings. He finally opened up about his thoughts in a recent interview on Good Morning Britain when he said this. I've been asked that question hundreds of times are there, do you believe in aliens? That I say yet, yeah. have you ever seen one? I say yet, yeah, I have. Well how have you seen him? Well I said I look in the mirror every morning. Uh, that's it? You look in the mirror? I mean is this like you're possessed or... You went so far from the earth when you came back that legally made you an alien? What's the deal, dude? Wow. That's kind of disappointing. I thought we'd get some answers. Speaking of answers, here's our next tinfoil hat story. And that's where do we all come from? I'm not talking about Ancestry.com or 23andMe. I'm talking about who made us. Well, there's a story I came across late in the week last week. Sort of the, hey, was it God or the devil? Was it Lucifer or the big guy? And that there was an answer in ancient Sumerian ta tablets and texts that helped to clear that up. Besides that picture, looks like it belongs in the side of a van. There's a Sumerian tablet. Let's run this video. Check this out. The human race. Was it Lucifer or was it God? Is this all by just chance? Is this all just a coincidence? Did we evolve from a single cell? I mean, what's the real story here? Damn, they got me again. Further, further I got into this story, they got no idea. Well, how did I ever think they could actually prove that the, the devil, Lucifer, made us? 
I don't know. I'm kind of gullible like that, but uh, that's just me. Uh, anybody, you remember our next story here? You remember Blink-182, the band? Well, you think of sometimes, in fact, their drummer Travis was in the news a few years back. He was involved in a fire. Uh, he was the guy, real little skinny guy, just hyperkinetic, just crazy, just tattoos everywhere. Well, their front man is kind of back in the news, and he's wants a little bit of that attention that Elon Musk is getting for his space program because he says he's got clear UFO, UFO footage and he wants to build a real spaceship. Well, don't you have to have, have like real blueprints to build a real spaceship? Well, there's a real drawing of a, I don't know, is that a hockey puck holder? Is that a Frisbee tosser? I don't know. Can't quite make that one out. But Blink-182 and Aliens, I've seen them perform live. There's a chance. That could be a connection. <laughs> I love it. Watch out, Elon Musk. The boys in Blink-182 are coming for you. All right. Next one is uh, about the Russians, because it's all been about the Russians the last six months to a year. The Russians um, infiltrated Facebook. The Ru Russians infiltrated voting machines. The Russians infiltrated our election. Well, you know what else? The Russians have been damn holding out on us. Because those of us that are interested in space aliens, we know that there's a chance there have been bodies out there. Space alien bodies. They've fallen in spaceships. Somebody's got to have one. Well, it seems according to this thing I came across last week, that the Russians have been holding out on us and that the Russians have an alien body. Check this out. I heard a comment this morning and said, would they film this with a potato? See, see, that, well, that's not the real shot, but it's what happens when you don't have real high quality video <laughs> they, they gotta have better video i mean they had they supposedly had better video in that suite in the ritz carlton in moscow that's another story but yeah I, I guess we'll have to take their word for it that that was an alien body because if you've never seen one before according to them uh you just saw it <laughs> that's it for tinfoil hat um let's move on to the feel good story of the week Cue the watermelon eating hamster. Or guinea pig. Dude, clean up. Just do better, will you? Wow. All right. Uh, this story here is, uh, there's been a few of these. This is just the latest one. But, you know, it just made me smile when I saw it. And it was a mom went to a company called Build-A-Bear and built a bear for the daughter um, so that she could have a present from her dad. Her dad, a soldier from Texas who's been deployed overseas. Uh, they put this bear together and, well, check this out. It speaks for itself. What does it look like? It looks like daddy. Yeah? Can I show you something cool? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Can you press right here? Thank you to that family. Uh, thank you to that dad for his service. And thank you uh, to Build-A-Bear and the Build-A-Bear workshops. Great idea, boys. Couldn't ask for uh, anything else. And it's kind of nice to have things out there and stories that make you smile. I hope this show, this little podcast made you smile on occasion, made you mad maybe a time or two, 
or it's made you think about some things. All right. Uh, if you want to uh, tell people about where to find this podcast, it's really pretty simple. It's unsafespacesusa.com. You want to tell somebody uh, here about stories or suggestions, it's producer at unsafespacesusa.com. YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Twitter, Facebook, it's all there for you. All right, that'll do it for this week. And uh, once again, time for us to say happy trails. Happy trails to you. Whoa. Until we meet again.